So welcome to Farming Matters, and thanks for joining us here today. I am your host, Erin Schneider. I work with the North Central Region Sustainable Ag Research and Education Program, and I also farm in South Central Wisconsin. And today we are in for a treat. So we are joined by Minister Aaron Hopkins, who wears many hats, including that of a farmer. He is Southside Family Farms, and he's here to share about his um, SARE Farmer Rancher Grant and ways in which he's connecting with youth in his community and growing food in the urban-rural continuum. And you're in and around Columbus, Ohio. Is that right, Minister Hopkins? Or yes, that's, that is correct. Uh, oh. I am in uh, the south side of Columbus, Ohio. Um, been in this community where I currently live, um, oh, about 35 years where I've raised my family at this, at this residence. But yeah, I'm actually, um, born in Oklahoma and Guthrie, Oklahoma. And so, but I've lived in Columbus, Ohio all my life, but I've got, uh, those Southwestern roots. So Minister Hawkins, I have to ask then, how did you find your way to Ohio? And then how did then from there, did you find your way to the Sayre Farmer Rancher Grant Program? And what, what sort of led you to this project you did? Yeah, thank you for asking. And so, yeah, my dad was in the Air Force and uh, he was stationed at Tinkerfield in uh, in uh, uh, Oklahoma. But I know we moved here when I was like two years old and uh, this is where we settled. And um, my dad actually retired out of the Air Force at Newark, Newark Air Force Base, which was uh, very close to actually where I do farm in my rural, you know, where I uh, uh, applied for the SARE grant to to do that work in that rural community. Uh, Newark is very much in that that area. Most of the time in my community, um, farming or working in the soil and doing that type of work is associated with enslavement. And so it has a negative context, context, you know, that is associated with it. And so um, even in my community, I know because I was a Boy Scouts, I was in the Boy Scouts um, and read Boy's Life books, I'd always see about 4-H, but 4-H was never present in my community. Uh, the South Side, um, um, uh, has always been a challenged portion of of Columbus. You know, they used to go, is it the South End? And we said, no, that's this is not the end of things. This is the South Side. And there's uh, the borders are far reaching on the South Side. And um, but, you know, it it is always um, been a place of a diverse community. Um, uh, a community that even where I live, we are considered a food desert, that uh, the the local grocery store is more than two miles. And so the, the, the food deserts are large. And so we end up with a lot of um, corner stores, a lot of corner stores uh, that do not sell healthy uh, fruits and vegetables. Fresh food access is a challenge, um, as well as some other barriers. And you know, so even through our church, uh, where I attend Family Missionary Baptist Church, we started learning this thing about sustainable ag and wanting to teach these young people that had no clue that um, they had family that were farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, we started out building garden beds uh, for grandmothers in the community, um, garden beds and fences, uh, because there was a big disconnect between the seniors and the youth in this community and we wanted to connect them where these youth could begin to hear the stories of grandma, you know, and what grandpa did. And this is the way we used to do it and that they would understand where their food came from. And that was the beginning of the story. And I did not know that story about, you know, I didn't even realize that I lived in a food desert um, and that people had barriers to fresh food access and so that's where um, the, it really started and wanting you to understand in our community, some of these barriers. So yes, our um, our SARE grant was uh, developed around wanting to educate. Um, and so we said five youth from the, and so we had said five uh, African-American youth from our community uh, to teach them about the sustainable agriculture of the black farmer 
and to understanding about in-ground farming and sustainable farming practices uh, in in rural areas. And so it was, uh, we really wanted to have them in a rural environment to understand outside of the community um, where someone was farming that did not look like them, that they could understand even how their grandparents, uh, some of their great grandparents or some of the patriarchs of their family sustained their family through farming. And uh, we wanted to help them understand that and doing it uh, in a sustainable way, uh, you know, with uh, cover crops and, uh, you know, drip, drip irrigation, uh, no-till practices. What was that like um, experiencing that transformation through the youth eyes as well to like the people with this project? They were very receptive to it. And um, we've been having fun with it. And uh, they worked the farm stand. And so we, cause that's part of our SARE project is we also taught them marketing and merchandising and understanding sustainability from the other end. You know, mm -hmm. how are you going to sustain your farm? You know, uh, doing a crop plan and understanding the thing about crop rotation and building markets. That is actually Chase, that's one of my grandsons. Uh, and so uh, he was out there before we started in the SARE project and farming with Pop Pop. And so he was out there when we got those put up by Yoder. And um, so these are some of the seedlings that we grow. We grow pretty much, I'd say 75, 75% 75 of our production is seedlings that we've grown. Um, these are some of the youth from our SARE project. Um, and... Uh, they came from Columbus Alternative High School. They weren't the high school that we had identified in the grant, but uh, they were doing an internship there from from COS is what that's called. And so these two young men have gone on to college. And so the one is at OU and he wants to be uh, an agricultural engineer. And uh, the other one is electrical engineer. And the young lady, um, the young lady, uh, Jada is... Um, She's in college at Columbus State. And so they were all three part of our SARE project. And this is one of our land bank properties. Uh, there's actually a uh, high tunnel on this property, but you're looking uh, west and it is on the east side. And that's Jerry, my right-hand man. Um, this is at the high tunnel in Johnstown. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you could notice the discoloration in that... Uh, um, uh in the landscape fabric there uh we got a lot of high a lot of water in these uh in the high tunnels and so that was a challenge from the re heavy rain events this mm -hmm. high tunnel would uh would flood and so i don't know is my cursor showing me doing yeah. that mm -hmm. and so you can see how compact this soil looks right here and it it was this stuff and so it's heavy clay out there we did not, we didn't understand that it was heavy clay and then how do we amend it? And so um, those are some of the things that we were talking to the youth and we were learning together. Um, it looks like we got some seeds we put in there. Oh, I know what that was. That was the first time we, I think that was, uh, I don't know if that's the first time we used a uh, cedar. So uh, we did have a project where we used a, um, uh, it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the expensive one. We got one now, um, but th we did that with an earthway. And so uh, we we helped them learn about using an earthway cedar and even burning these holes. And so uh, the youth got to experience this and why using the agricultural land, you know, the fabric and for weed, uh, they quickly like, oh, we need fabric down, you know, uh, they that weeding, they weren't real up on that weeding. And uh uh, so this is the backside of Miss Julia Lynn Walker. Uh, she is a partner at uh, uh, on the SARE project with me. Um, she is a uh, she has a, uh, a Agri Academy and uh, in Bronzeville, Bronzeville Agri Academy, as well as um, uh, Bronzeville Farmers Market. And so it's on the uh, on the near east side of 
Columbus, but very much in a community that is diverse like mine. And so this picture here was actually at South High School. Uh, and so you see at this time, the students, you know, it was facial protection 100%. And uh, so uh, we were there engaging, uh, engaging the youth. And so uh, I see some of them. So this may have been like the next year because they I see they don't all have them. But when we made inroads into the high school, these are eighth graders. Um, yeah, they did have um, they did have uh, masks. And so this is another one of our this is our first um, our first. Uh, land bank property um you can see this is much our little learning pavilion and you can kind of see through the fence here is some benches and mm -hmm. you remember i said about green spaces being places for conversations well before any of that stuff get got there and all of these beds this is like six years of uh keep adding on um we used to have mother grandmothers come and they would sit on the bench and we would tell the stories. And so this photo is actually out of a project uh, Columbus College of Art and Design is doing wayfinding for us. Mm -hmm. And so this is just uh, one of the presentations they made, but that is not the one we going with. And so actually this weekend, we will be inciting, we will be installing the first of our wayfinding signage from out of a 614 beautification grant that is providing wayfinding. Uh, we have like four of these, five of these spaces within one block of each other in our community, including, I've got pictures of our farm stand. This is this is a rendering of our farm stand. Um, and so I do have pictures of it up, but this is a rendering. Uh, that farm stand is on some commercial property that is owned by the Grody family of Donato's. And so the Donato's, uh, First Donato's was on that land. It's still there on Thurman Avenue. And so they are great partners in our work. Uh, I believe these were the these were the students that did that with CCAD. And uh, these were the designers of that project. So I threw them on there. This is another uh, out at Johnstown. And uh, this is, uh, we, we learned how to take a BCS uh, tiller and to form these beds and uh, form these beds uh, um, I tilled the heck out of them <laughs> the first year I did, you know, we were doing tilling and I took that BCS and I did a whole video talking about how loomy I said, Oh, look at this. This is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And we came back out that next spring after the winter and all that water and it was just standing mm -hmm. and it was like soupy mud and you would sink and it was so much clay. And, and so that summer, it turned those beds into like concrete. And yeah. that's when we really started understanding, you know, about no-till and over-tilling and soil amending and organic material. And so I think that's what we are doing here is preparing to add organic material to those beds. And so there are pictures where we're doing this. This is another one of our inner city gardens. Uh, this is a healing garden. Uh, that is Austin. He is one of our, he came from OSU, uh, OSU um, natural resources, like a master's class. And so he has graduated in May. Oh my gosh, we're still missing Austin. Uh, he was a <laughs> tremendous help to us and he loved working with the youth. Um, there's Ethan and um, Wyatt again. Uh, that is organic material that we got uh, from Scott's donated from Scott's Miracle Grow. Uh, that's Jada again, and she's kind of bashful. And there's Austin working. This is this is that same first garden. Um, looking at it from inside the garden, here's that learning pavilion. Uh, we have a small washing pack here. Um, everything grown in raised beds because there was a house there, and these houses um, uh, were built pre 1960. And so they have lead paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, everything grown in these urban farms, you grow them in, um, it's recommended to have eight to 12 inches of soil. And so we usually stroll for 14 inches. Um, uh, this picture is old enough. Well, no, Austin was here. Um, 
we were adding um we were adding uh what is that uh it was bags of manure and uh bags of manure and uh, hummus and it was like brick hard and so i think that's what uh uh it's not just tilling and so we yeah. were trying to break that up uh, so I, if someone were you know like you're i mean i'm just looking at all i don't know like when you slept through the last three years um <laughs> but what would you offer if someone else was like seeing a blank you know or not even a blank or just a a lot in their city or their neighborhood and just like they can see the end result of sharing that food and like all the steps in between what would you offer um as a tip for that you that you like if we were to do this again you're like oh i would definitely have done this to like others yeah. trying to do that work. yeah i definitely and so just uh and so the extension office is a great resource in any in any uh city you know uh, through the land bank colleges uh, to connect with your extension agent, you know, office. Uh, and then, you know, I'm a big advocate of civic um, mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm a commissioner and uh, that thing of community. And so you see it going down. This is all community here. <laughs> and uh, this is at a uh, food bank. And uh, we establish, um, so there's 12 of these beds now. And um, it's always about the resources in your community. Um, I did a whole thing on asset-based community development and uh, understanding the assets in your community. And uh, so, yeah, we're we're getting ready to build food system. And uh, uh, these are the young people. They had fun. And you definitely want to connect with the young people. Um, you see, they're smiling. They a little bashful. <laughs> Look like Chase, look like he's sleep over there. But uh, <laughs> but these were some of the youth. Uh, we actually got some grant funding uh, that actually partnered with um, our grant city council gave us some funds uh, because we want to give the youth something to do and some things to learn. And uh, a lot of times you cannot do that without resources. And, uh, and so you can see the older homes in this community, very much an urban this is one of the tours we went on. And so we took them to other other farms where there were people that looked like them, that mm -hmm. they could understand like, oh, wow, you're a farmer too? Mm -hmm. And we took them to some rural farms where there were uh, African-American farmers and and they, they they just could not fathom that, you know, there was somebody looks like me that's a farmer, got chickens and chickens out here running around. And stuff, and so they were learning composting there, and at this farm. And so yeah, so yeah, just definitely connecting with the resources that are uh, in the community. Be become aware of uh, uh, what the needs are. And I was actually at a Steiner Summit yesterday or Monday, Steiner Summit, and we were in Cleveland, Ohio. And um, one of the things that came up is don't always assume that you have the right thing that everybody wants. You mm -hmm. said, go into a community, ask the community what the community wants. Mm -hmm. And so just don't think that because that's what you're growing. That's what they want. And um, make sure you connect with the community to see what the community wants. And so that's my wife there, plug for my wife. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, she's been a, a big one uh, in helping, uh, in helping. And so, uh, we definitely was talking to the young people about family and their heritage and, you know, building strong roots. And um, and so, you know, very much a man of faith. And, um, you know, there were a lot of principles and practices that we were able to give them and they didn't know they were being preached to, uh, you know. So we <laughs> slid some stuff in there, slid some stuff in there on them and they didn't know uh but uh yeah it's it was fun and yes i would do it all over again um in a heartbeat yeah Ooh, thank you it sounds like you're amplifying it too and your heart keeps growing in this project and yeah. just how you how you walk the world man so thank you yeah this this project that we're working on now and uh this this project that we're working on now is really big and probably the most funding that i've ever asked for um, but I believe the need is even greater now 
uh, because of some of the challenges that we have going on in our community. And, you know, we do need to give the youth some other options. It doesn't take a lot of land to have to be able to do, uh, to grow food, but you can even do companion planting and just understanding what you can do in small scale um, farming and doing it in ground and doing it in a sustainable way. And that is what we wanted to teach. And uh, I think we've been successful. Well, thank you again. Um, yeah, well, I've well, definitely you. enjoyed telling my story once again and sharing <laughs> and uh, hearing from you guys. And uh, <laughs> just remember, farming matters. No, likewise, we're hoisting a toast to you, man. <laughs> okay, you take <laughs> care. Being so generous. Bye-bye. Uh,